Lakeland Currents, your public affairs program for North Central Minnesota. Closed captioning is made possible by Bemidji Regional Airport, serving the region with daily flights to Minneapolis-St. Paul International Airport. More information available at BemidjiAirport.org. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to Lakeland Currents. I'm Ray Gildow. The program today is going to be about building community. And my guest is Mike Hike, who has been a very, very influential and effective leader in this particular program that we're going to talk about today. And one of the things that we want to stress is that what Mike has done for the Staples community can be replicated in other communities. In fact, he's working with some other programs in some other bigger towns where they wanted to do something like this. So, Mike, welcome aboard. It's good to have you here. Well, thank you, Ray. Thanks for the opportunity to talk about something that we're really proud of. Yeah. So tell me what a little bit about your background, Mike. Well, I'm, uh, I'd say recently, but not recently, retired from Sourcewell. Uh, when I retired, it was called NJPA, or the National Joint Powers Alliance. And, and I was a director of contracts and marketing, and then I progressed to the, di the director of uh, strategic initiatives and, and uh, kind of as my phasing out towards my retirement. So um, this type of thing was something that uh, I worked with while I was at NJPA. We would have great large uh, vendor gatherings and we would put production type uh, events together using similar formats to what we've done with the Hall of Fame program. So, uh, so we're talking about the Staples Hall of Fame, but we're also talking about how this Hall of Fame is building community pride in relationships probably that you didn't even expect. Is that fair to say? Well, you know, living in Staples and in the Staples Motley area, there's always been that um, when you have a, a community that's that's trying to heal from consolidated uh, school districts, there's always uh, an element of healing that needs to take place between communities. And I always knew it was there. Um, and I'm sure everybody uh, as well understood it was there. And I could see though that if we would highlight and focus on the things that we're, um, that we all had in common, that we all uh, valued in common, and that we all celebrated in common, that there's a chance that we could put behind us some of the friction that just swells up within, um, within communities. And it does in all communities across the country. Mm -hmm. So it was there, but it wasn't the driving element, but it certainly has been one of the results. One of the things that uh, has impressed me about this program is how it's brought people back who have left the community or right. their families have left the community and it's brought people back to share memories of really important parts of their lives that, that would never have happened otherwise. No. And you know, every, every school has their, their times of glory and those times when they celebrated together and uh, those should never be forgotten. And uh, we have a tagline that we use at, at, within the Hall of Fame and it's called that time fades everything except what you choose to value and recall. So when you think about that, time is our enemy. It fades our memories. And so this Hall of Fame program has a way of bringing those memories back and almost rekindling them and celebrating them again. And, and it's brought value to the community. And it's been an element, Ray, of, of building our community pride back. And not that it was ever really gone, but it kind of just starts to fade. And I think it's fair to say that many communities, large and small, don't have a program like this. It's kind of amazing when you think about it. Um, the ones that do, Brainerd does, and, and some of the other area ones do, and some of them are just um, are, are not. They're 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 just kind of a process. Uh, and and uh, by the way we do it at a, maybe at a higher level of a production, it really gets people behind it, and it get it draws attention. And uh, other, other communities realize that it, it takes a lot of work to get something like this started. And it takes a level of uh, dedication and commitment and you have to stick to it. It's not a program that you can start one year and then just not do it for a few years. Uh, once you start it, it has to keep, you have to keep going. And uh, it is kind of amazing that the number of schools that don't, even large schools mm -hmm. that uh, you would think would have a well-established program, don't. I'd like to come back and talk about Crete and Durham Hall Right. In a minute, but before we do that, how did you start putting this together? You and the board or whoever did this, how did you get started? Well, you know, it's like everything, Ray, it all usually starts with an idea. Uh, any, any program or initiative usually starts with an idea. And it's the idea kind of just got nurtured with a small conversation with a couple people, me and an, another um, 
two or three other individuals. We was actually at an athletic event in Staples and we started talking about uh, the success that Staples and Motley have enjoyed over the years. And what, what was the elements of that? What was the chemistry that, that made, uh, made that a reality? And the, the driving force that came to the surface every time tend, seemed to be commitment. And the level of commitment that the coaches and the, the athletes had at that time and during those times of glory seemed to be very uncommon. And so the idea, the conversation continued, well, how do we get that back again? How do we get that level of commitment back on the table and, and, and ingrained into today's athletes and into today's coaches? And one of the ideas was the Hall of Fame. And to not, and I want to make this clear, we didn't start the Hall of Fame, the Athletic Hall of Fame, to dwell on the success of our past athletes, coaches, and teams. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's an important part, but that wasn't why we were doing this. We, we really wanted to use that success to help motivate and inspire the next generation of athletes and coaches and teams. Inspire them to take their athletics to a higher level of commitment. Um, because commitment be, seemed to be what drives our, that drove our success in the past. Uh, how do we get that commitment again back into the current athletes, into the current coaches? And the Athletic Hall of Fame program seemed to be the foundation that, that we could do that with. So you have a board, you have a board, right? Yes. Uh, I, full disclosure, I'm on the board. Right, right. <laughs> and you also have an, uh, an effort to raise money. Right. Because none of this stuff is done without some cost. Sure. How, how have you gone about raising money for this? Well, first of all, we had to prove ourselves that we're not a flash in the pan. This is, gonna, this is here for the long haul. Uh, I think you'll find that most uh, financial supporters want to see something that has value and that's something that has longevity and something that, that uh, is going to make a difference in the community. And uh, had to sell that. Okay. Well, first of all, we had to prove that. So our first program was pretty much on a shoestring. And uh, we didn't even have the program printed. We, we didn't have the funds to do that. And so it, it started with just uh, uh, minimal funds to get started because we had to prove that this was something that was valuable to the community, to the school, uh, something that had value to the individuals that were gonna be uh, inducted. And uh, through some, just some uh, very dedicated supporters um, kept, you know, kind of gave us financial contributions throughout the community. Uh, we applied for a couple of grants through the foundation. The Initiative Foundation it was awesome, and I could go through the list of supporters we have. But the, the key was we had to prove that this is something that, that's going to be here for, for more than just a, a short term. So there's a, a lot of debate going on in parts of the country today that athletics really shouldn't even be in the schools, that it should be more like a club yeah. uh, outside of the school district so the school district don't have to finance it, oh. the bus rides sure. and the coaches and all that. What's your perspective about athletics? Because you have been an athlete in high school yourself. Well, and you know, and yourself as a coach and athlete, um, I, I think there's, there's research and, and proof that um, athletics has value to developing character and leadership qualities in individuals. And those, those leadership qualities that move, uh, they kind of translate into becoming better citizens in communities. And uh, uh, athletics, you know, truly uh, has, has a place in, in how, how our youth um, grow and how they develop into, um, you know, and develop into uh, uh, committed citizens of our communities. Uh, they make better students. I think that's, there's research on that. Uh, coaches make better teachers. I think there's research that, that proves that. And uh, right now, the, 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 the whole climate with, uh, with athletes is kids aren't participating very much in, in athletics. Uh, number one, you don't see the three sport athletes that we used to see. And kids, they get in a sport and then they tend to kind of fade away after a while. Uh, it's getting to be less and less common for a 30 year coach anymore. Everything's kind of just changed. And we think that the level of commitment, if it gets reinstilled back into these coaches and athletes and into the teams um, through a level of commitment and dedication, that we can bring back some of those uh, qualities that we think are important in, in high school athletics. So the very first event that you did, what, what, what was your approach? How did you do that? Well, you know, first of all, I mean, it's, I wanted it to make this program, I, it was very important that we made it something that the community was proud of. 
uh, so that they would go to it and say, I'm coming back. Um, if you can't get people to come back, you've lost them. And so it was very important that, that it, it be uh, professionally done. And that's where I mirrored some of the things that I did before in my past that, that uh, brought some of those, those quality elements and the little things that made a big difference. And so not to get into a lot of details, but we did the little things that made a big difference. We made the, the athletes and coaches um, feel proud of their past, and we made the, the, re the, the community residents proud of our, our legacy of athletics. Uh, we didn't make it, we, we actually highlighted that so that people had it. When they left, there was a, feel, a, feel, a feeling of uh, community pride. And it, it started to make a difference. And we, there's a, a blended community we have now between Staples and Motley. And when we got together at the reception after the event, I noticed, and it was, it could, it was clear that the guards had dropped, the, any friction that maybe it had uh, um, existed in the past, was fading and you saw a lot of back slapping and there was people from both communities there and and it was just a blending of community pride that could not be denied and uh, it was a proud moment to be a part of it to witness it and it's just gotten better we just finished our third um, program this year and it was uh, the, the the Timbers event center was packed it was elbow to elbow and the, the amount of community pride that was just obvious in that room you could feel it. You could feel it, Ray. Now, the first show, the first program, rather, that you did, how did you decide who's going to be recognized? Well, one thing about <clears throat> when you do this, you have to do it um, to a level of integrity, and, and it has to be fair. And so uh, we put a lot of work into the ballot, into the nomination process, uh, how people get nominated. You can't just say, hey, put him in the Hall of Fame or him or her. They have to be nominated. They have to be uh, elected by the committee. And I, you know, we selected a committee from both Motley and Staples residents in, in an age range and the younger and, and elderly from generations of athletics. And so the process has to have the level of integrity that's impeccable. And that's very important as we move forward. And so the, the balloting was done and the elections were, were made and we kind of identified early on and how many inductees we're gonna have. As one thing you don't wanna do is have a program run too long because that'll ensure they don't come back the next year. <laughs> so, uh, and we made it clear in, in that the, the speeches were not too long. And so all of those little things that are mistakes that are made with other programs, we made sure we didn't make those. And uh, that started to help us it raised funds and build for the next coming coming year. Did you work with any other school districts that have had a track record of doing this before you guys started doing it? You know, when I looked at the bylaws, <clears throat> I did look online at some of the, the common bylaws, and we use Brainerd's um, as a foundation on the criteria to, to use. And I think that was probably the only information we used from another district was what are the criteria on how um, what, what the athletes and coaches um, need to do need to be. One of the things you have to be out of, you can't be coaching or, and you must be out of high school for seven years. Okay, that was a, kind of a foundation criteria. So, so um, traditionally, a Hall of Fame is an area. <clears throat> and a lot of small school districts don't have an area they can dedicate to this. So you found a different way of um, recognizing these folks without taking up a whole lot of physical space. Talk about that. Well, we, uh, technology is, is amazing and it uh, continues to change. And one thing we found out real early, Ray, was uh, we, we want to award the, the, the uh, inductees a plaque, okay? And so, and everybody, the, the plaque to hang on the wall. But we also had to put a plaque in the school somewhere so that when people come in, they would see who our inductees were. So our first year, we started and we put plaques on the wall. And I, th I think we had uh, nine or 10 inductees. And, and immediately I could see, we're gonna run out of room. We're gonna run out of room. This is not gonna work. It's gonna look cluttered. And so we uh, started talking to, to the industry on what's, what, what to do about that. And uh, many of the schools, not many of them, but it's, it's kind of the latest technology is to use a digital media display. And it's a touch screen where it's a 65 inch touch screen display that you walk up to it, you touch it, up comes the Hall of Fame, you can pick the inductee and their entire career can be uh, played right before you. You can also click on that link from anywhere in the country or the world for that matter um, through the internet and access that, um, those inductees athletic careers. 
So that's been a huge step forward. But it took uh, financial contributions and what, it took what, a... What did that cost? It what? was uh, $14,800, I know exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, we had some donors step up that believed in what we were doing and contributed and we made the purchase and installed it uh, just in the last three months in the Staples Motley High School okay. in the concession area. And it's a tremendous asset to our school and to our program. Now I know Creighton Durham Hall and, and maybe another two school or two Blaine. found out about this. T tell us about what happened there. Well, we, uh, we presented it, our athletic director, Josh Lee, uh, presented our program at the, uh, uh, the athletic director's conference last spring. And uh, there was several in the room that were very interested in what we were doing because, like I say, many of them don't have a program. Uh, they don't know really how to start or the finances it takes to do so. And so as the, you know, when he got done presenting it, I got calls back. Um, first one was from uh, Blaine, which is a Noka Hennepin school district. A big school district. Big, huge. And mm -hmm. uh, um, wanted to know, you know how they could participate with what we're doing. Creighton Durham Hall is only in their second year which is hard to believe, you know. That's that a private school. Private school, but they have Joe Maurer, Matt Burks, and some of the some big, money. yeah. <laughs> and so, but they still liked some of the things we were doing. And I remember, I recall telling the AD, I said, use what you want. Uh, we create this, this program so that others maybe can take advantage of it too. And so uh, uh, Blaine is moving forward and gonna use our program. There's also several schools in the area here in our region that I have shown interest on um, how to get started and how they can leverage some of the, the things that we've already uh, put in place. Part of the big things is our ballot, all of our graphics, uh, our bylaws, and then just the production of our event itself. Um, that's all in place and we can easily hand that off. Um, <clears throat> how do you decide who's going to be the master of ceremonies and how do you decide the length of the program? Well, I, I kind of, we've set a, a a foundation that we don't want it to go any longer than two hours, okay? And so we, we time just about everybody's, um, their, their bios are timed, and we give them only so much time to talk about in, uh, in their acceptance speeches so that we don't over, uh, exceed our time limit. Because then we have a, a reception that takes place afterwards, and we, we don't want to make the event too long that then it cuts into the reception. So it's, I would say that it's all calculated down to the minute. Hmm. And so uh, we have ways of uh, maybe and you have you, a little gal yep. with a wet towel. She comes out with her referee's <laughs> shirt on and she has a towel and she when they're exceeding their time limit, she'll tap them out. And it, it's kind of humorous for the crowd, the, the attendees to, to watch, but it's effective. And uh, that, again, as I mentioned before, the last thing you want to do is have people talk so long that we lose their interest and then they don't want to come back. And yeah. so all of these things are an important part of a production. How, how has this benefited the community? The community pride Ray, is just noticeable how there's, there's always an element between the school and, the, and the, the city and the community that could always be improved. I'm not saying it's ever bad, but it can always be improved. Sure. And the communication between the two can always be improved. And I think we've seen that um, bridge built stronger um, between the, the community and the school. Other things that are really important is the aging, um, the empty nesters in a community. Uh, their kids are out of school and they have no connection with the school any longer and pretty soon they just kind of fade away. This brings them back to the school for reasons. Maybe it's their son or daughter that gets inducted or a relative of theirs gets inducted. Many times it's the only reason that they have to come back into the school. They don't go to the sporting events anymore because they don't have anybody, any kids in that. Uh, so it's really helped um, connect the community back to its, its, uh, its members. Um, and I, I just, this is a fact too, and it's something every community wants to um, grow their community with their business climate, with their, um, get people to move into their area. How do you get somebody to, to move to your community? Uh, everybody has choices nowadays. They can choose to live where they want. Well, people tend to like to, to move into communities mm -hmm. that are successful, and athletics is one of the areas of success. Not that, and then the arts and academics and the theater and all the fine arts, those are all important elements of why somebody would want to send their children to our schools. So they build their businesses, they have a choice where they can do that. Uh, when you build community pride in a Hall of Fame program, 
uh, there's a reason why people might want to start a business here. So there's some, there's some business development elements and growing a community with people moving to your, your community using uh, the reason or the references of a, a Hall of Fame program or an ath a successful athletic program in general. This is done on a weekend. And usually it's almost a two-day event for someone who's coming from a distance to, to the event. So there's been a positive impact in the motels, the hotel. Oh, absolutely. There's been a positive impact mm -hmm. on the restaurants. Uh, I don't know how many people you had this year, but it was packed, standing room only. That's a huge financial impact to the it community. What, and what are some other ways you think the community can benefit from this? Well, the, just the, the community pride is not, it's not automatic, Ray, and, and you know this, and we all, it has, it must be earned, and it must be nurtured, and sometimes it takes the past and the, 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 few, the current to come together to build community pride that sticks, and uh, it takes, it, it takes effort to do that. Um, we had people come from Texas and California and Florida, um, and, and they'll be at the next one. Um, and so some of them say, I'm, I'll never miss one of these. And so it gets people to reconnect with the community and uh, all based on some of the past success that they, that they lived through on their own uh, over the years. So there's a variety of, of uh, community benefits. Um, I think that one of the main ones, it just, it minimizes the, the friction that may be existing and it puts that all in the rear view mirror. And people forget about any disagreements that they have between the school and the community. That's, I think that's huge. Um, and it makes people proud to live in our community. And uh, when kids get out of school, they have a choice. They can move away, but they can also stay here and raise their children here, start their businesses here, or commute to a job elsewhere and live in Staples and Motley areas. So those are, those are elements that I think uh, we're contributing to. <clears throat> Staples and Motley are both small communities, but there's an amazing amount of state championships that have come from these two communities. Could you just share a few of them? Well, Ray, that's a, that's a part of our story. And just over time, and just the, the way time fades everything, really no one ever took a, the, the initiative to count how many state championships Staples had. And through the 70s, 80s, 90s, and 2000s, uh, we had a tremendous level of state level success. So we took the initiative and started counting them. And uh, the initial number was 28 state championships. And then it actually grew to 30. And now we're at 31 team state championships. Also at that time, it was 63 state champions, individual state champions. And just as impressive to me are the 59 runner-up individuals mm -hmm. and the 13 runner-up state team championships. Uh, we, Staples Motley, is, there's not even a school close to us in all of outstate Minnesota. The closest school to us has 17 state championships. Wow. So it's, it's an amazing type of a, a statistic. And once that number kind of got out there, that helped build our community pride and, and got people to reflect on the past once again. And wow, I remember those times. I remember that state tournament. I remember those days of glory. And so we built a sign, um, which another took another uh, financial commitment. As you come into Staples at the stoplights, uh, you'll see a sign there that says 31 state championships. And, uh, um, and it's all built around Cardinal pride. And uh, I think the number right there is 65 individual state champions. An amazing legacy of athletic success. And you're talking about cross country runners. You're talking about wrestlers. You're Everything. talking about tennis players. Uh, yeah, that is an incredible number. It, and it's, I didn't realize that it was the most of school districts our size in the whole state. Out state. It's, out, it's, it's higher out. than any other school district. That's amazing. And uh, the other thing that's important, and people sometimes, well, what about academics? What about um, the fine arts? The program that we develop, Ray, can easily be handed off to the fine arts, uh, easily handed off to the future farms, the FFA program. Uh, some of the, the success that we've, Staples Motley has had in that area has also been amazing. So um, it's not our area. We're not going to do a program and include all those that, that somebody else has to pick that up, but we'll give them the program so that they can, uh, so that they can easily put a program together to recognize and honor uh, those, those individuals that help drive that. So what's your website? How do people find out more information about this? Well, we have a web page and uh, Facebook's been really effective for uh, us communicating um, all of our, our, our programs. 
And uh, I, I don't have the, the web page link right on here. Um, maybe it can be brought up on the screen. Or our web page will have our nomination form and it has some of our, our directories are all on there. Um, the link to our digital media display is on there, available. And uh, we're, we're doing our best to try to get the word out. And uh, we're not shy about being willing to share it with other communities. And I, we hope schools contact us and find out. You have the event in the fall. What are you doing the rest of the year? Are you still working on things now? Well, right now, <laughs> with the nominations are open from uh, November 1st. And through, anyone can nominate. Anyone can nominate. All the way through January 15th, we shut off the nominations, and then we'll go into the process where we'll put all, we'll gather all their, their career data, and then it'll go to the committee, and then, then we'll have our ballot put out, and we'll vote, and we'll select uh, however many inductees we're gonna have for this coming year, and then we start gathering all of the photos and all of the career bios on each one of the inductees. And it's a, it's a year-round process. Uh, we're getting better at it, uh, and, and it's all about a process, but it's, uh, it takes a lot to gather the photos. Uh, we have a graphic designer that, uh, Pete Card Graphics out of Bemidji, that does a tremendous and a wonderful job of pulling all of our information together. We have a slideshow that's uh, put together at the, at the event. So all those photos go into the slideshow. That directory right there, that 16-page directory, is a, um, right that's, that's, a, that's a tremendous publication. And we do one of those every year. We're also, just so you know, as, as we move forward, every five years, we're gonna do a hard copy collection of oh. the five annuals. Oh, nice. So uh, we're, uh, we really are adamant about not letting people forget um, the legacy of our athletics because we think it's important for a community to not forget. Because if we let it, time will fade it. <laughs> well, Mike is, uh in charge of this and he will not take the credit for it. He has a board and there's other volunteers, but every process like this needs a champion. And Mike is a champion. He has, I, I couldn't tell you how many hours he has put into this program and it's really made a difference. Thank you for jumping on board with us. And if anybody wants to find out about it, Mike, how do they get a hold of you? Well, uh, we'll maybe put the information up there, but they can text me or uh, um, con contact me through email and uh, I can get them the nomination forms, or if another school is interested, we have a flyer that we call our shared content. We can send them to help them get started uh, with their own program within their own school and community. Perfect, thank you. You've been watching Lakeland Currents. I'm Ray Gildow, so long until next time. <laughs>